The famed Red Brigade of New Antioch is made up of volunteers who have already paid a great spiritual cost in the war against Inferno. Every member of the Red Brigade has lost someone close to them in the battles of the Great War, and is driven forward by the pain of that loss, their hatred of the heretics and demons, and their tremendous and unbreakable faith in the militant Christ the Lion. The Red Brigade was founded by Saint Ernest, the sole survivor of the Second Battle of Acre. It was at Acre that Saint Ernest marched alongside his brother Wilhelm to face the hordes of the Hesarach Berenger, and it was at Acre where Wilhelm fell. Witnessing his brother cut down by the forces of Satan, Ernest hacked and sliced his way to his brother's body, donning his blood-stained helmet and screaming holy curses at his enemies as he returned to the fight. As he drove his sword through the cancerous heart of the final heretic, and the beating of his own finally subsided in his ears, he heard only the strangled screams of the mortally wounded, the braying of the demonic beasts too brutalized to stand, and the cawing of the carrion birds eager to feast on the human and the heathen alike. Of all the forces from both sides who had marched to war that day, only Ernest still stood. Seeing no other reason to have avoided joining Wilhelm in death, Ernest saw it as divine will, an ordained miracle by the Almighty himself. Ernest gathered up his brother's armor and returned to New Antioch, a prayer on his lips for his brother's soul for every step of the journey home. As he drew closer to New Antioch and thought further about surviving such impossible odds, his resolve grew. The Lord had given him something special, a means to truly understand the nature of war, the pain of loss, the empty hollowness of once soft memories now hardened by anguish. The Almighty had granted him the gift of grief. As his brother, whom he loved, had been taken from him, so he would take from the armies of hell. Every heretic he encountered would be killed, every demon destroyed. And where hell laid delicate plans to murder the innocent and assault the weak, Ernest would be there to thwart them. His every thought, effort, and action from that moment his brother was taken from him to the moment he joined him again would be possessed of a singular divine focus. Upon his arrival at New Antioch, he began recruiting volunteers for his vendetta. As a gifted orator driven by the anguish of his loss, Ernest soon gathered a following of many other bereaved soldiers like himself. Thus, the first Red Brigade was formed, and Ernest led his unofficial warband into the no man's land on the hunt for heretics, through ambush and deep strikes at the vulnerable enemy supply lines. His blood soaked warriors soon began to resemble their leader in appearance, which earned the unit its name. Their skill and cunning on the battlefield caught the attention of the throne of New Antioch and the Red Brigade was recognized as an official unit in the Ducal Armed Forces. Under Ernest's leadership, it was as if the Red Brigade was a weapon wielded by the very hand of God, as they utterly destroyed any heretic warband they found. The soldiers of the Red Brigade turned the burning flames of their grief and loss into victory, exalting always in the grace of the Lord and thanking him for the chance to avenge their fallen comrades. When they found their quarry, they would wait until the perfect moment before assaulting, springing a trap with such vicious feet that nothing could escape from it. Soon, the presence of the Red Brigade was felt all along the heretic supply lines in the No Man's Land, as Ernest and his blood-soaked troop would emerge from the fog and the dusty sands like spectres on the breeze, slaughtering their enemies. Since establishing itself as a force to be reckoned with, capable of success in the face of steepest challenges, the Red Brigade has been used as the personal special operations force by the Duke of New Antioch. They will take on the bloodiest possible missions, where the odds are stacked against them, as they know that regular units would fail if given such tasks. All Red Brigade soldiers are volunteers, and they must bring the recruiting officer a piece of kit tarnished with the blood of their fallen comrades as proof of their right to serve a blood pledge, as the soldiers in the brigade are known. Every soldier in New Antioch is aware of the pain that leads another on the path to the Red Brigade, 
and as such no one would dare to sully the memory of the fallen by seeking entry without knowing the sting of true anguish. As a unit under the command of the Duke, the Red Brigade is granted many privileges while garrisoned within the city, in addition to arms and provisions from the city's stores. Their barracks are located at the Ducal Palace, and before the Red Brigade leaves for a mission, they dine at the table of the Duke and his closest officers, in a lavish banquet known as the Feast of the Dead Men. Due to their propensity for hunting high-value targets, the Red Brigade is supplied with warhounds from the kennels of the Duke. These loyal beasts give solace and companionship to the troopers and have been trained to provide the soldiers with grenades in the heat of battle, when the Red Brigade strives to take heavily defended enemy strongpoints and trenches. Malinos, Wolfhounds and Mastiffs are particularly popular and much loved by the soldiery of the unit. On the battlefield, the Brigade operates deep behind enemy lines and takes on missions such as cutting supply lines, strikes aimed to eliminate senior heretic commanders, and surprise assaults on elite formations on the march. They even operate in the parts of the no man's land claimed by the Iron Sultanate, much to the chagrin of the Sublime Gate. The brigade has even struck at the domains of Beelzebub around the cursed city of Ekron. They live off the land, seeking no noble patrons, and trusting only in God and the Duke. The Red Brigade are a grim and silent unit, haunted by their losses and long patrols in enemy territory. Often yearning to be reunited with their lost ones, they are willing to accept missions where death is almost certain. This self-destructive attitude chafes many members of the clergy, who do not condone the existence of the unit, as suicide is a mortal sin. However, the Brigade has proven itself to be so useful to the Duke that the Red Armour troops have seen continuous service for decades. After each fray, it is the task of the Quartermaster of the Brigade to gather the arms and Red Armour of the Fallen and redistribute it so new recruits will have a real, tangible link to the Brigade. But when faced with a battle where the Commander of the Brigade sees there is no hope of survival, it is customary to dispatch one of their soldiers back to New Antioch in order to notify the Duke of the unit's demise. This messenger is chosen by drawing lots, and the selected soldier takes the dog tags of the entire unit back to the home of all our hopes, to be hung from the walls of the Chapel of Remembrance, there to join the thousands that have given their lives for the brigade before. The last member of the brigade then asks for a personal audience with the ruling Duke or Duchess. The traditional greeting in such circumstances by the survivor is as follows. The Red Brigade has fallen, to which the ruler of New Antioch solemnly answers, and the Red Brigade will rise anew. And thus the recruitment of the new Red Brigade commences, and the cycle of violence, revenge, and blood begins once more. <laughs>